Welcome back. We're going to discuss now one of the new features, which is auto configuration. What is that? Now, in this lab that I've shown you previously, I've been using it throughout the IPv6 uh, section of the course. This is a lab, and I told you that I usually use everything statically. I even assign uh, the IP addresses on each interface statically. But I went ahead and I added a computer just to show you on another interface, completely different network altogether, uh, just to show you how the auto configuration feature does work. Now, what I went ahead and did, I went inside this PC, I'm going to bring it over here. I went into the IP configuration and I used the 2001 48 face 1000 colon colon one using a standard 56 and then the gateway is 2001 4800 face 1000 colon colon F. So that's fine. I, I assigned it there statically. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to, in this router, under that particular interface, I'm going to go ahead and assign, do the auto configuration. That way you can see how it assigns the end of that particular address. So and really I shouldn't have assigned it statically. I should have just said auto config. Right? And let's see what happens. All right. Let's go ahead and, because there's a command, you can do like an IP config, IPv6 config, release, renew type of thing. So it's, it's here it works. But our concern is not in the PC, is in the actual router. All right. If you're going to route, and again, this is giving you a heads up into your routing portion of the course. Uh, and this already has it, and I'll show you. Uh, I'm sure you can see that there. Show start. That's a rat. Show start. You must type IPv6 unicast routing. That's one command that you must type if you do any kind of routing on your routers, whether it be static or dynamic. You must type that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do Control C. I'm going to go to Config T, Global Configuration. Now, just to let you know, when you go take your test, once you're inside the router. There's always questions, hey, Laz, can we type config t? Can we use, you know, conf t? Uh, can we use int? Because I do a lot of abbreviations. Some things you can, like config t, I think is I mean, permissible. You can do config t. I don't think they want you to type out configure terminal. I really don't. Uh, if you can't type config t, then type out configure terminal. But I think that should be OK. Uh, int, mm, they may want to see interface, then f00. But int f00 should be OK. Definitely you can do WR, which is right. Uh, you can do copy. You have to. You have to go back to privilege mode and do a copy run start. You cannot stay within an interface or a line configuration interface and do do, ping, do, whatever. They don't allow the do command. And, uh, but for some reason, there was a student not too long ago told me that he was able to tab and use question marks. That's kind of funny. But either way. You see what you can and can't do. If you learn the whole complete command, that's perfect. That's great well, for the exam. Once you get to a real world, you want to be quick, you learn how to abbreviate real quickly. All right, uh, so what am I doing? Oh, yes, I'm going through the interface. I'm going to do a do, which you can't do in the test. <laughs> Show IP in brief or IP, yeah, IP in brief. All right, these are my IP addresses or my interfaces. That's what I want to see. So I'm going into the F01 interface. That's where I attach that PC to. So I'm going to go int f0 slash 1, enter. And in order to put an IPv6 address, I'm going to go IPv6 address. And let me expand it since this is a long address. All right. It's going to be 2001 global, right? 4800. It's my provider. I am part of Facebook. Ha, ha, ha. And then I just pick 1,000 here for my subnet, colon, colon, F. Well, I'm not going to do anything, colon, colon. Uh, we might as well put it, why not? Put F. And then put, to put the rest of the address, uh, let's put a CIDR 56. And then we're going to do EUI dash, oops, 64. Okay, now we've done that. EUI-64, 
is what auto configuration does. What it does is it's not going to get the MAC address of this particular interface and it's going to put it as a portion of the IP address of the, uh, the actual IPv6 address. But your MAC address is only 48 bits in length. You need a 64-bit address, the interface ID portion of it, right? So what does it do? It puts a triple FE, FFFE, smack in the middle of that MAC address. So let's take a look at we've done. I'm going to copy what I've done. I'm going to do a DWR. Yes, you cannot do that in the test. You have to exit, exit, copy, run, start. I'm going to do a, yeah, let me go. Let me, let me do it the right way. Here you go. Not the right way, the test way. I'm going to do show IPv6, show IPv6 address. Oh, in brief, sorry. In brief. And you can see that in my fast Ethernet right here, right? Here's my face, right? 1000, there's my network ID. And here is the interface portion, which I didn't put. It automatically did it for me. There is the triple FE that I was telling you about that it put smack in the middle of the MAC address. Not to get too deep on it because that number two does mean something, the universal bit and all that. No need to get into that. What you need to get into is, hey, auto configuration. You're using the EUI64, which is going to use the triple FE padding to create a four, from a 48-bit MAC address into a 64-bit uh, MAC address for my interface ID portion of the uh, IPv6 address. And that's what that's for. That's it. My curiosity is in the PC. I want to see. Oh, I didn't do a no shut. Ouch. Press. Oh, yeah, I didn't do a no shut. Whoops. Let me go back in. Int F01. No shut. All right. There she blows. And just out of curiosity, let me take a look at that. I didn't do anything. All right. It just assigned to that interface. I would have to. I think there's a command here. You can do IPv6. IPv6 config forward slash renew. Is it? That's what it is. No, it's an invalid command. IPv6 config forward slash all. Oh, okay. I'll be going to say word less all, so that will be renew then. Nope, there's no renew. Is that a question mark? Yeah, there's a renew. It's right there. Why is it telling me that it's not doing it? I guess you need a DHCP or something for it to do it. So I can do it. I can actually put it in manually since it won't do it. But you can see I do have my link local address right there all right so i can go ahead and uh ping that but i really don't want that i wanted to go ahead and see the acp version 6 request failed so that's the reason that's doing that but now you see the reason for the auto configuration you can dynamically assign uh ip the interface id portion of it dynamically, automatically, by itself, just by using that EUI64. The only thing is that now your MAC address is part of your IP address. Some people don't like that within Windows. You can go ahead and generate random numbers. You don't have to use that padding. But again, if it's a small network, you really don't have to be concerned with it. Uh, you can just put it in, you know, colon, colon, one, like I do, colon, colon, two, colon, colon, three, and, you know, you can go that way. Yeah, I mean, you have, my God, you have eight, you have four sections, and you can just start making up numbers or have your own scheme if you wanted to. But if you have, if you work in a pretty large network, you may just want to, you know, configure DACP version 6 and have it assign these addresses dynamically. Well, there it is, auto configuration. It's not really that, that difficult to configure, and it actually, uh, well, let me, so we can take a look at it again. So you don't forget what it looks like. Show IP v6. In brief, I should have just done an up arrow. All right, and there's it actually assigned that particular portion of the address 
dynamically because of auto configuration. Pretty cool feature in IPv6. Now you know what it is. The mystery is over. All right, play around with it and, uh, and see what you can do. I'll see you in the next one.